Hello, um, today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I'm going to be doing a book review, but this is going to be part one of a two-part review. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm currently um, enrolled in classes in uh, mid-semester uh, at university. So I have to read this book for class. Um, and I read it during the summer because I got it a little early. So this is going to be my review before we discuss the book in class. And I will do another video review um, after that discussion because I think it would be kind of interesting to see how the discussion um, changes how what I think, potentially. Um, the second video might end up being very short <laughs> um, if my view stays the same. So that book, the book in question is um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And as you can see here, it is the 1818 edition, the original. And my professor is very specific that we get that edition. Um, there was another edition published in 1831 where she did major revisions, added some... Um, there was enough changes and they were significant enough that um, my professor thinks they read as two different kind of novels. I mean, obviously they're similar, but um, the 1818 one apparently is a little bit more in your face. So um, to get started, essentially, um, the story of Frankenstein is about Victor Frankenstein, who is a scientist. Um, he, we, I mean, come on, we all know the story. He creates the monster, and then the monster goes around doing bad things. Um, mostly because Victor's um, kind of a jerk. Uh, he creates him and without any thought to what the consequences will be and makes him ugly and then sees him and freaks out and abandons the monster and then the monster ends up learning stuff from a family he spies on um, and then when he finally tries to make um, friends with them he's chased away immediately because of his ugliness and people immediately assume he's evil. Um, and that's, that's kind of the whole point, I think. He starts doing bad because people treat him terribly. Um, he goes to Frankenstein, he asks him to make him, um, a companion of a wife. And Frankenstein starts on that, um, because the monster essentially kind of like, well, he says that he'll go, they'll go to South America and hide in the wild and not cause anybody any problems. But then as Victor, one, is taking freaking forever to make this thing and kind of putting it off and putting it off, he then starts and then decides, like, oh, what if they have babies or what if they don't, you know, do what I what they say they're going to do. So he tears the creation apart and uh, the monster sees this and freaks out and says, okay, that's it. I'm just going to spend the rest of my time making your life miserable. Murders Victor's best friend. Murders Victor's cousin slash wife. And I think, if I remember that discussing it, that was one of the uh, changes in the 1831. She changes um, his wife from his cousin to just like an, a kind of like a family friend who was adopted and raised with them, but not necessarily related. Um, and then Shelley, or the monster, um runs to the Arctic, and Victor is like, oh, well, now I'm going to spend my life trying to find him and kill him. So, um, it's, it's kind of a novel. What it, It's a novel that addresses one a couple really interesting and important philosophical questions. One is, um... Are people born evil or made to be evil? Because the monster, in Victor's eyes, was born evil, was born to be a creature of the devil. But from what the monster says, he didn't desire to do evil. In fact, he tried to learn to be good and tried to act good. But every time he got lonely and wanted some companionship or to interact, he was treated as a monster, and so he became one. Um, and then he finds the only thing that can bring him any semblance of a twisted happiness is uh, 
doing bad things to Victor and Victor's family to get revenge. Um, it also kind of questions the role of science, although not too much, because he does say that he kind of goes overboard. Um, but it's definitely it's definitely kind of interesting. I don't know if she intended Victor to be the bad guy, but to me, the entire reading of it was that Victor is the is the villain. Victor is truly the barbaric one. Um, and as a creator, awful, terrible. Um, it's also kind of an interesting thing if you think about the idea, uh, if Victor comes to represent God and the monster represents humanity, then is one of the reasons that we are so bad in general, um, with all the war and the atrocities that are committed, because we are left without guidance. Um, that's one aspect of it. It's not necessarily, I think, her point or the biggest aspect. It's also interesting that the monster and Victor are doubles of each other. They're like a mirror image. Um, Victor starts doing what the monster did um, in that he starts to be... Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, so from what I got from it, Victor was a bad guy, and he's whiny, and I didn't like him. The monster is a tragic character, and I felt very bad for him. I felt very bad for Victor's family. They love him a lot, and he, with his whininess uh, and inability to handle any sort of problem or take any real action about anything, causes a lot of them to be killed. Um, for no reason better than Victor is lazy and doesn't think about his actions. Um... So yeah, it's, it was actually a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to read than I initially thought it was going to be. Um, and I suggest that if you haven't read it, that you read it. Because there's a lot of interesting stuff in there that isn't necessarily um, science fiction-y or horror. There are a lot of interesting philosophical quandaries and questions. Um, so I will leave you with that, and hopefully... After we have our discussion uh, on this book in class, I'll have a different insight or possibly um, a different outlook on this work. All right, as always, good reading and enjoy life.